Ready or not, here we go. Download this question in your heart, and if you're taking notes, am I generous? That's the question I want you to wrestle with today. And listen, I put this question in the first person because I want all of us, including Pastor Darrell, including this staff, to answer the question, am I generous? Why? Because it applies to all of us. It applies to everybody. All right, Luke chapter 9, we are going to start reading in verse 12. If you do not have a Bible today, don't sweat it, don't worry about it. All scripture, everything you need to see will be up on all the screens. Bible says this, late in the afternoon, the 12, talking about the disciples, came to him and said, send the crowd away so they can go to the surrounding villages and countryside and find food and lodging because we are in a remote place here he replied you give them something to eat they answered we only have five loaves of bread and two fish unless we go and buy food for all this crowd verse 14 about 5,000 men were there but he said to his disciples have them sit down in groups of about 50 each the disciples did so and everybody sat down Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke them. Then he gave them to the disciples to set before the people. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. Now, don't don't miss this this morning, man, because this is go God good. The Bible says there were 12 disciples and 12 baskets of food left over. I mean, in other words, every disciple got a doggy bag. Okay, that, that's just good, okay? And, and see this story in the theater of your minds because this miracle is not only a miracle of generosity because if you know this story, you know that it was a young boy who gave his lunch, but it's also a miracle of multiplication. The Bible says there were 5,000 Men. And what, why, is this in so, what, why is this so important? It's important because Jewish tradition counted the men to see how many families were represented. So if there were 5,000 men there, church, there were 5,000 families. In other words, bam! Okay, I just woke somebody up. Jesus fed approximately over 15,000 people. With, with five loaves of bread and two fish. And yes, before you even ask the question, I believe that happened. I believe this book. This is absolute truth. And I know we live in a world, we, we live in a culture that says absolute truth doesn't exist anymore. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. This is the inerrant, infallible word of God. All other ground is sinking sand. This is it. Understand, the Bible says that one day every tongue will confess and every knee will bow that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'll never do that, preacher. Yes, you will. You you have a choice. You have free will. And you can do it on this side of eternity or you can do it on this side of eternity, but it's going to happen. But here's the deal. On this side, it's too late. It's too late. In fact, I want to help you with this story because, you know, this is an old story and this was, you know, thousands of years ago. So imagine for a moment that you are one of the 12 disciples and this story is happening today and it's a Pack-A-Pew Sunday. Who remembers Pack-A-Pew Sunday growing up? All right, got a few people in the house. Okay, and this, this story is happening right now, and there is a guest speaker that's walked on water, healed the sick, raised the dead, and he claims to be God. Now, anybody that, that claims those things and does those things, that's going to pack out a building, right? And so the, the building's packed out, standing room only, and this guest speaker begins to teach, and before you know it, it's 12 noon, and he hasn't stopped. I mean, he hasn't taken a breath. And now it's 1.30, and you're not only hungry, but your favorite team, the Dallas Cowboys, God's favorite team, okay, is headed into the second quarter. Why why y'all laughing? 
That's just Bible, okay? There's a reason there's a hole in the roof. Think about it, church. The Bible says in verse 12, he's got to watch his team. Late in the afternoon, that's what the Bible says. In other words, it's 2 o'clock. It's 3 o'clock. It's 4 o'clock. It's 5 o'clock. It's 6 o'clock. And he's still preaching. And the Bible says the 12 came to him. Remember, you, you are one of the disciples, and you're not just tired, but you are hangry, okay? And, and, and some of y'all know what I'm talking about, and some of you are going, what? Okay, that means you're hungry and you're angry. You're hangry. And I know we got some teachers up in the house, and you're going, that, that ain't even a word. That's a word, okay? Look it up in the Callahan Dictionary. It's there. <laughs> hangry. Hilliard, Yuli, it's all there. Now, remember... Jesus has been preaching all day. And you know what I think, church? I think the disciples decided, let's form a committee. Why? Because that's what church people do to get in the way of what God's trying to accomplish. A lot of churches like that. Holy Spirit's gone, but they got their committees. Think about the story. Because if you've ever read the Bible, you know that Peter can't keep his mouth shut. And he probably said something like, hey guys, I don't know about you, but I'm starving. I'm hungry, okay? I, I, I mean, I, 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 my blood sugar's low, and if he doesn't stop soon, I'm not going to make it. So let's tell Jesus the people are hungry, okay, because Jesus cares about the people. Thomas, do, do you think that will work? I doubt it, Peter. <laughs> but it's worth a try. And now you are elected to be the spokesperson to go to Jesus. See this story. And so Jesus is speaking to the crowd. And you come up to him. And you're like, excuse me, excuse me, looking at the crowd, excuse me. Jesus, excuse me. Mr. Jesus, King of Kings, can, can I have just one minute? Okay, just, just one minute. Because, Lord, um, the 12 of us were thinking. And by the way, um, today he's been go God awesome. I mean, it, it really, get it, go God, because you're God. It's awesome. Anyways, could, could, Anyways, we, we, we could go all night listening to you. We, we, we really could because, man, you're just bringing it. You're, you're preaching. It's awesome. But we're just so concerned about the people. Because, you know, the closest outback is at least a two hours walk from here. So we were thinking that you should dismiss the service and let the hungry people go find something to eat. And so Jesus says, you're not hungry? <laughs> no, 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 so we're good. It's the people we're concerned about. Then Jesus says this in verse 13. You give them something to eat. Now, put yourself in the disciples' position. Because there's approximately 15,000 people. And Jesus says, so you're concerned about the people? Yes, sir. Okay, then you give them something to eat. Do what? <laughs> I mean, sir, what, what, what did you say? You, you said the people were hungry right yes sir then you give them something to eat and now comes the hard part because you have to go back to the disciples and tell them what jesus said C can you see the other disciples hey 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 did, 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 did you tell jesus the people were hungry yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i did is he going to dismiss the service not really i don't, I don't think so well what did he say he said for us to feed them. He said, what? He said for us to feed them. How are we going to do that? There's a buttload of people here. And the only food that I've seen is some boy who's got a Captain D's value meal. How are we going to do that? We can't do that. That meal only has five pieces of bread and two fish. Can't you see Thomas? I don't think that's going to feed everybody. Peter, well, somebody needs to go take that boy's meal. Go, go, go get it. Tell Jesus this is all we've got. And so now you have to go back to Jesus. Again, excuse me. Excuse, sorry. Mr. Jesus, all we've got is this value meal from Captain D's. It's just five pieces of bread and two fish. Jesus says, that's awesome. Have them sit down in groups of 50. 
No, I, I think you misunderstood me. We've only got one of these. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I heard what you said. Have them sit in groups of 50. Now, I don't know about you, church, but I, I, the, if you've ever had trouble just working with people, you know, some people are hard to work with, right? Have you ever had that before? I mean, you know, most people, they, they can't do what you tell them to do. They've got to ask questions. So see the story. All right, I need everybody to sit in groups of 50. Why, why, why 50? Why not 100? Why not 150? Then someone else says, well, are you going to feed us? We're hungry. And, and the disciple says, just be quiet. Jesus said sit in groups of 50. <laughs> Jesus said it. Now, watch what happens next because I believe they still didn't get it, church. Verse 16. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke them. Then he gave them to the disciples to set before the people. Now, don't miss this because the boy's lunch did not multiply when Jesus prayed over it. It didn't multiply when he broke it. The Bible says he gave thanks and the Bible says that he broke it. And then he gave half of it to his disciples. I mean, see, see this story. Can't you see him breaking the bread? And can't you see Peter looking at the crowd and looking at the bread? I mean, he, he gave each disciple a piece. Peter's like, you think you might want to bless it again? <laughs> because there, there, there's thousands of people to feed. And, and the other disciples are behind Peter going, yeah, this ain't going to work. And Jesus says, give it to the people. And I can see Peter walking over to that first person. Just, just take a little piece. I mean, what, what would you say? And one by one, just, just take a little piece. Just, just take, a, take a little piece. And he's going down the row. And all of a sudden, he looks into his hands, and the bread has multiplied. It's grown. Don't, don't miss this today, Christ follower, be, because the miracle did not happen when Jesus blessed it. The miracle did not happen when he broke it. The miracle happened when the disciples gave it away. That's when it happened. And why is this so important? Because here's the truth. Until you give away what God has placed in your hands, it will never multiply. It will never multiply. Question. Do you have a heart of generosity? Answer the question. Get honest with God. Get honest with yourself. Forget about where you're going after church. Forget about who's sitting next to you, who, who's behind you. Answer the question, are you generous? Two biblical truths. I want you to download into your heart today, and we're done. Again, just like last week, we're not going to beat a dead horse but I want you to take these two truths and soak them into your soul and ask yourself the question, am I generous? Because it's easy to say, I love Jesus, yes I do, I love Jesus, how about you? But what does your life say? What does your checkbook say? First truth, letter A. It has to be blessed before it will multiply. Christ follower, this truth has the power to change every area of your life. But here's the deal, according to God's word, it takes a heart transplant. It takes a heart transplant. Why? Because the Bible says where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In fact, I want to give you an example. Go backwards in Luke chapter, to Luke chapter 6. From 9 to chapter 6. Go to Luke chapter 6, verse 38. And, and if you grew up in church, going to Sunday school, you've been a Christian for any period of time, and you read your Bible, you know this verse. Many of you probably have it memorized. Watch this. Luke 6, 38. Give, and it will be given to you. 
A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap, for with the measure you use it, it will be measured to you. Now, that's an awesome verse. Give and it shall be given to you. I love it. All you have to do is give and it will be pressed down, shaken together and running over, right? Wrong. Survey says, it's not true. That's called taking scripture out of context and creating false theology. Listen, every scripture in this Bible has one interpretation, his and that's why the best commentary on the Bible is always the Bible. And if you don't know the rules of interpretation, and we talked about this in January when we did our series called Pause, guess what? You will violate the truth of God's Word every time, creating a false doctrine that will lead you away from the truth of God's Word. In fact, let's look at Luke chapter 6 again, but hit the rewind button back to verse 27. All right, And remember, this is Jesus talking to his disciples. He's just not talking to the crowd. He's talking to his disciples. And so if you are a Christian today, a disciple of Jesus, raise your hand. Okay, so he's talking to you too. You might want to do that after we read this. Watch this. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Drop down to verse 32. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. Now drop down to verse 37. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. And can I stop right here and just say real quick that, that some of the most judgmental and condemning people on planet earth are Christians the world does a better job of forgiving and restoring people who have messed up I mean the last time I checked the church was a hospital for those who are hurting who need healing we'd rather shoot the wounded you know why we do that as Christians because there's something in our life that makes us feel better about our sin when somebody else falls God help the church today. You see, that's why people don't come to the church anymore for the answers to life. Because what's being lived out there is not the same. We, we, we've got to engage the culture with, with, with the, the, the light of Jesus Christ. We've got to be different. We've got to be set apart so that they see there's something different about us do not judge and you will not be judged do not condemn and you will not be condemned forgive and you will be forgiven watch this here comes our verse give and it will be given to you a good measure pressed down shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap for with the measure you use it it will be measured to you question did this verse just take on a whole new meaning to you because it should have do not judge and you will not be judged do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. And then it says, give, and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. In other words, this verse was never meant to be a motivation for you to give like so many prosperity teachers teach today. No, sir. This text this scripture was meant for you to examine your heart and ask yourself the question, who or what do I trust? Do you trust God? Can God trust you? Do you trust his word? Believing that he is your Jehovah Jireh, your provider. Or do you love money so much that you can't trust God with one dollar out of ten the Bible says for it's the love of money that's the root of all kinds of evil not money Listen, money's neutral it can be used for good it can be used for bad just like Facebook it can be used for good it can be used for bad I mean you, you can be in here have a snap picture of you worshiping God and then Friday night, snap a picture of you standing on a table with the salt and pepper in your hands. Okay. 
That's not using it for good. That's telling the world that I just go to church. Jesus has not changed my life. Do, do you love money so much that you can't even trust God with one dollar out of ten? And listen, I've been there. I've sat in that seat. I've, I've been to the place in my life where I did not. I shared with you week one, 15 years, I robbed God. And so I want you to understand this next statement, this truth from God. It's not judgment. It's not condemnation. I just want to share with you from God's word. And, and like it or not, believe it or not, this first one is the only one that has the power to redeem, the, redeem and bless the rest. It's the only one. This is the only one that can multiply it. That's it. God wants to be first. God wants to be the center. And when you bring the first one, the Bible says he redeems the rest. That's what the Bible says. Understand, every time you get paid, you take a test. You take a test. And you either pass that test or you fail that test with the first fruit of your increase. And according to the Bible, he commands, he doesn't suggest that you bring the tithe. Why? Because you cannot give what's not yours. It's his. 31 times in the NIV, 30 times in the KJV, and 33 times in the ESV, the Bible says first fruits. Now, take a guess how many times the Bible says last fruits. Goose egg. Zero. Nada. None. Are we getting the picture? The Bible says you bring the tithe to the storehouse, to the local church. In other words, you can't designate your tithe. Well, I, I want to put it over here. It's not yours. You want to give an offering somewhere? Praise God. Give it anywhere and everywhere you want. But the tithe comes to the storehouse. Bottom line. And if you're not bringing the tithe to the storehouse, you're disobeying God. You're disobeying God. Letter A. It has to be blessed before it will multiply. Second truth, letter B. It has to be given away before it will multiply. The Bible says Jesus blessed it, he broke it, and then he did what, church? He gave it to his disciples, and they did what? They gave it away to the people, and it multiplied. Question, church, sir, ma'am, teenager, if the disciples had decided to eat the food, do you think it would have multiplied? No way. Why? Because it only multiplied when they gave it away. The Bible says, store up for who? Yourselves. Treasures in heaven. Listen, when you and I give, it honors God. It honors God. Love God, love people. Love God, love people. Can the Christian life get any deeper than love God, love people? It just, it drives me crazy. People, I want to go deeper with God. Love God, love people. I want to go deeper with God. Love God, love people, okay? It's not hard. Love God, love people. It doesn't get any deeper than that. In fact, that's why I believe God has blessed the Journey Church. Because our mission is to love Him and love people and to give. And why do we give? Because that's what He's called His church and His people to do. That's what He's called us to do. In fact, take your Bible real quick and go over to Proverbs chapter 21. Let's Bible surf back to the Old Testament. Proverbs 21, 13. If you have a highlighter, a pen, underline this, highlight it. The Bible says this. If a man, if any person, shuts his ears to the cry of the poor, he too will cry out and what? Not be answered. Stick that in your pipe. Roll that up. 
smoke that for a while. That, that's a strong verse, church. That's why we have that verse on, on our food truck. Why? Because it reminds us that God is serious about helping people in need. The Bible says there will always be poor people in the land. Always. And that's why it's one of my prayers as the lead pastor of the Journey Church that one day our testimony will be be like the church in the book of Acts chapter 4 where the Bible says there were no needy people among them. Can you imagine if that was the testimony of the Journey Church in this community? That there were no needy people among them. And, and has God blessed us? Yes. Have, have we been a, a church that gives to this community? Yes. Absolutely. But our work's not even close to being finished. There's so much more we can do. And if you will get it, then that's how much more we can do as a body of believers. That's how much more people we can help. That's how much more we can impact this community. People who need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. People who are dying and going to hell. God has called his church to give. And yes, God's given us a great testimony, but it's his testimony. So I want to challenge you today, Journey family, to put a bless others line item in your budget once a month. Just once a month. Bless somebody else and see what God does with your heart. See what God does with your heart. Question, do you think that young boy that gave away his lunch or the disciples that watched Jesus multiply the bread and the fish in their hands doubted God's ability to bless what you give away? Do you think they doubted? I don't think so. I'm sure that little boy went home and said, Mama, Daddy, you ain't going to believe. Woohoo! I had a value meal from Captain D's and somebody by the name of Jesus multiplied it and fed over 15,000 people. Son, what are you smoking? <laughs> I've seen it, Mom. i seen it, Dad, with my own two eyes. Are you generous? Have you seen God work in your life? I've seen it and experienced it in my own life. We've seen it and experienced it right here at the Journey Church. Just just get honest with God because here's the gospel truth. One day you will be held accountable for what God has placed in your hands for his glory. Nobody else will stand there for you. And, And if we can just recognize it's all his, everything that we own is his And if you don't believe me, then try and take it with you when you die. You can't do it. You're going to leave it behind and somebody you don't even like is going to take it. Everything you are, everything that you do, you're writing your own story. And you have a choice. You have free will. You can either be a good manager or a bad manager of the resources God has placed in your hands. Those are your choices. And I don't know about you, church. And I don't know about you, Christ follower, sir, ma'am, teenager. But one day, when I stand before God, I want to be found guilty of being generous. I do. Let's pray. God, we love you today. God, you're an amazing God. God, I, I just stand in awe of who you are. And what you can take and just multiply in our lives. And so, God, I pray that you would find this church, God, your church, faithful. God, you you would find your people faithful. God, I pray today that somebody, God, who has been wrestling with their finances, someone who who, has been holding on to it and, and, and just scared to death and full of fear, God, I pray today would be the day they let go and let God. God, they would let you be in control. God, they would make you the center of their finances. God, I pray that today. God, I pray that next weekend we would pack this place out. God, many people, God, would come and God, they would hear your word and they would go through that workshop. And God, they would find help. They would find the tools. They would find the coaching to help them get out of debt. God, I pray that. And I pray it in Jesus' name. 
and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.